Once upon a time, there was a siren fair. She had sorrowful eyes and dried seaweed hair. She loved to bask on the shore and explore the depths. Not once did it occur to her to beware of nets. One auspicious night, under the bright full moon, a lone fisherman waded out into the blue. His eyes beheld silver, an unearthly glow. What lay beneath, he needed to know. He cast his net far and let it fall deep. It found its purchase in melancholy sleep. The siren awoke in an alien world. Gasping and frightened, she cried drops of pearls. The fisherman was transfixed, and his desire consumed. Naive though he was, he had sentenced her doom. For no aid from our world can a mermaid derive. And once she has come here, she cannot survive. Hey guys, welcome to this tearful mermaidy makeup tutorial. I'm honored to collaborate with my magical friends at Fairy Magazine for this tutorial and video, so a huge thanks to them for making this possible. If you haven't heard of Fairy Magazine, you're gonna love this. They are a quarterly print international magazine. They reside in a world with no limits and they cover all things fairy and, on very special occasions, mermaids too. Their magazine issues and handbooks are so stunning, and I'm just so thrilled that I get to contribute with my sparkly mermaid's tears to this current issue. This video tutorial has also been translated into print form, so feel free to check it out in the magazine itself, along with all the other magical features that I just know you're gonna love. You can subscribe or order the issue online at fairymag.com, or pick it up in person at Barnes & Noble if you're in the United States. I was inspired by the beautiful imagery, poetry, and lore within the pages of Fairy Magazine to dream up this tragic siren and her tale. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't avoid these mermaid puns sometimes, you guys. <laughs> we all love Disney's Little Mermaid around here, but most of the mermaid lore I've come across outside of Ariel's story has some element of sorrow, and they don't always have a happy ending. I've always been fascinated by the concept of a mermaid's tears. I imagine they cry more than just drops of salt water. This look portrays my mermaid with liquid silver tears that have the luminescence of pearls and sparkle like crystals. I created this look in May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, so this project felt especially timely and cathartic too. I'll be talking with you more at the end of this video about my own personal struggles, so stay tuned to the end if you'd like to hear more about that. Alrighty, let's get on with the tutorial. FYI, I am only a sometimes makeup artist <laughs> and I am self-taught through experimentation on my own face. So this isn't necessarily the right way to do anything, just how I like to do it. So have fun, no pressure, and feel free to change up the look to be your own kind of mermaid. Feel free to take my makeup advice with a grain of salt, a grain of sea salt, if you will. <laughs> but I really hope this gives you some siren inspiration. Okay, let's go. I've started off with my face already prepped with brows and my base of foundation and powder. I'm starting off by lining my waterline with a white eyeliner pencil. This will open your eyes up and give you that innocent doe-eyed effect. Now I'm giving myself a quick neutral eye using soft shadows. I didn't want the lids to compete with the focal point of the look, those shimmery mermaid's tears, so feel free to keep it simple and clean here. Start with a subtle cream or pale shade to highlight your brow bone, then cover your lid with a nude or taupe color. Blend 
blend it out in the crease with a fluffy blending brush. I felt like I wanted to perk it up with a little shimmer, so I'm adding some shimmery pearlescent shine back over the brow bone and then in the center of my lid. Blend with a brush or your finger. By the way, I'll list all the products I'm using below. Most of what I'm using on my eyes are products by Smashbox. These shadows are from the Vlada Smashbox collaboration, by the way. Now I'm darkening up the outer edge of my eye just a little by adding some brown shadow that's just a few shades deeper than the rest of my lid to add dimension. I'm using my fluffier brush to pack the color on a little quicker. Blend it out to get rid of any severe lines and drag what's left on your brush into the crease and the inner corners of your eyes to finish it off. Next, it's time to get blushed up. <laughs> Ever wanted to go ham on the blush? Well, now's your moment. Guys, you cannot go too crazy. More is more. <laughs> generously, and I mean generously, dust matte blush underneath your eyes, up your cheekbones, and continue about halfway down your cheeks. I'm starting off by mixing really vivid pink and coral shades from my palette. I'm using my fluffy blush brush here. <laughs> Swipe across your nose, under your eyes, and then introduce some pink irritation underneath and around the sides and at the tip of your nose. After I got some color layered on my face, I started to go in with a smaller shadow brush to get in close underneath my eyes and really pack that color on. Focus the most saturation right underneath your eyes and blend down from there. If you don't get a perfect blend, that's okay, but try to smooth it out so it's a soft fade if you can. We're mimicking the red blotchy effect our faces get when we cry, but in a slightly more glamorous, definitely more exaggerated way. This pink ombre face we're creating is gonna serve as a great contrast for our silver tears once we add them later and really make them pop out. So the more color you can layer on now, the more payoff you'll get in the end. Up the ante with some matte red eyeshadow and concentrate right under your eyes. This shadow is gonna make your eyes really stand out and the denser, smaller brush gives you lots more control and color payoff. I switched back and forth between my blush brush and the smaller brush as I built up the color to the level I wanted. Make sure to blend up into the outer edge of your eye and brow bone too, so the fade looks more like a natural flush. I amped up the color around my nose with that same red shade once again, using the smaller brush to really sell that skin irritation. A final blend with the blush brush around the nose, a touch of pink at the edge of the chin and forehead, and we're done with this step. Line your eyes with brown liquid eyeliner and wing it out. I'm using the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown. FYI guys, this stuff is great for mermaids because it's totally waterproof. <laughs> Curl your lashes and add mascara on top and bottom. Now add your falsies. These are the new opulent noir style from House of Lashes and they're made of their synthetic faux mink fiber. I already cut them to fit and I'm wearing them a little further out towards the outer edge of my eye since that's what's most comfortable for me. Now comes the part we've been waiting for. It's time to paint on your tears. I'm starting out with my Ben Nye Lumiere Cream 12 color palette. It's basically metallic face paint that can be used wet or dry. I added a touch of water to make a thick paste and I'm just gonna go to town with the white and silver shades. 
first painting on the shape of the tears pooling under my eyes, and then the tear tracks extending down my cheeks. I'm using a basic paintbrush to paint this on. Pick something thin that gives you a lot of control and take your time. And if you don't have this palette, there's tons of other eyeshadows, paint pots, or mineral shimmers that would work great for this. Just choose something on the thicker, more pigmented side and mix it with water for a paste-like consistency if you can. This is mainly just being used to create the shape. We're gonna be adding more detail later, so don't worry about being too perfect with this part. There's beauty and imperfection. <laughs> in fact, I purposely made each side different since I'm one of those people who needs to make everything asymmetrical. Create a little teardrop shape at the end of each tear track and smear and drag your way around with your paintbrush. Try for rounder shapes to mimic a watery look. Add another layer and a more blinding shine to your tears by mixing water with some loose mineral shadows in the same silvery shades and just adding a second coat. I mixed two loose mica shimmer powders in silver and pearl colors to create a really metallic liquid shine. Go in a bit heavier with the silver color when mixing to get that liquid silver look. Paint this on as smooth as possible and keep your brush really wet to get the best application. If you do find that your eyeshadow creates any uneven texture, don't worry about it, there's an easy fix for this later. The second layer you're painting on will make your tears pop out even more and start to look 3D. If you have a foiled eyeshadow in a silver, seafoam blue, or white shade, you could also mix that into your water and pigment mixture for extra highlight and depth. One of my favorite tricks to make my eyes look extra big and doll-like is using tiny little piecey lashes underneath my eyes right at the outer corners. And the great thing is, I don't have to spend extra money and buy these guys. I just save the extra bits I cut off my regular false lashes and repurpose them on my bottom lash line. For this look, I use three tiny lash clumps on each eye, placing them so there's a little space in between each one to keep them looking natural. Use a tiny dot of lash glue on each piece and place any longer pieces towards the outer edge of your eye. Try to get them as close to the lash line as possible where your natural lashes grow. And take your time, no need to rush. Now it's time to add your bling. This is what's gonna make your tears 3D. I'm using flat back pearls and crystals in a few different smaller sizes. You can find them at your local craft store or beauty supply. And then you can just use whatever shapes you want. Just make sure you stick to the same colors pearl or clear crystals or clear AB crystals to make sure they blend into your tears. Place and glue the larger pearls and crystals first. I'm using eyelash glue to stick these on. I just used a teardrop shaped Swarovski crystal at the end of one of my tear streams and a larger pearl on the other. I also placed my other larger Swarovski crystals under one of my eyes so that it picked up the light and looked like a wet tear rolling out of my eye. After your largest stones are on there, start layering on some smaller pearls and crystals too. I like to space them out randomly so the look feels more organic. So I put some in little clusters and then I leave some hanging out on their own. I use both a brush and my finger to apply them. And also, if you happen to have any texture or small lumps from your eyeshadow mixture before, you can cover those areas now with stones to mask it. I got you. <laughs> Finally, using a fluffy brush, I picked up some of my tiniest clear crystals and very gently patted them onto any empty spots or areas where I wanted extra sparkle. Be really careful though when using tiny elements like crystals, pearls, or glitter near your eyes. You can also ask a friend to help you place them while your eyes are closed to be extra safe. You can't be too careful, you guys, and you just never want to scratch or damage your eyes. Moving on to the lips, start lining them with a nude lip liner and fill in completely. I like the way this makes my lip color look later and it gives it extra staying power too. My lips are on the smaller side, so I like to line outside my lip line a bit and add some concentrated color down the center of my bottom lip to make it look more full. Next, fill in with a matching lip color of your choice. 
I'm using a liquid lipstick here and applying it with a lip brush, adding just a touch of a lighter nude shade in the center for added depth. Once you have a pretty nude lip, go over the outer edges with some sheer blue or seafoam gloss and blend it out. You can also add some of your shimmery silver pigment from the mermaid's tears to make your pout shine even more. So for a final bit of moonlit shine, I patted some pearl highlighter on at the end, focusing on my cupid's bow and the middle center of my bottom lip once more. That's gonna make them shine and go from natural to ethereal. Wrapping up, dust a little highlight or shimmer onto the tip of your nose, then grab some cream makeup in a very light aqua or seafoam color and add some mermaid scales. So dip a flat brush into the makeup and determine where you wanna place your scales. Using a mermaid scale stencil like I'm using here, just begin to paint them on around the edges of your face. Lay the stencil flat to your skin and brush softly over the top. Don't worry about being too perfect, the stencil will take care of that for you. Once you've got that scaly face sorted, feel free to continue the scales down your neck, arms, torso, just anywhere you want for the total body mermaid treatment. Finish everything off with some long beachy mermaid hair and you have transformed into a tragic but stunning siren. I've clipped some sequins into my waves to look like bubbles, and of course, I couldn't resist donning my favorite starfish top and transforming my legs into a mermaid tail. <laughs> well, technically my tail was made by Mermaid Cariel, but if your tail was made by a real mermaid, that means you're an authentic mermaid too, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Cariel, for the mermaid tale of my dreams. Click open the description box, you guys, for her links and her info. She is amazing. Since this look was also created with inspiration and sensitivity towards Mental Health Awareness Month, yeah guys, I'm two months late posting this video. It's meta, but my health actually slowed me down a bit finishing it, but hopefully it was worth the wait. I thought I would share just a little bit with you guys about my own journey. I don't know about you, but I'm not immune to falling victim to depression, anxiety, and fear, along with some of the physical illness and chronic pain that likes to come visit me at the most inconvenient times. <laughs> I personally think that focusing on gratitude and not being afraid to talk openly with those we trust can go such a long way to getting our mindset in a healthier place. For me, my faith keeps me grounded and hopeful and helps me know I am not alone. Beginning a new fitness journey has me excited and distracted in the best possible way. And let me tell you, pumping more endorphins into my body has done wonders, especially on those days when I normally wouldn't get out of bed. Getting outside into some sunshine always helps me warm up from the inside out and family and friends and just focusing on others are priceless gifts that lift my spirits. And of course, the other piece of the puzzle, my music and my art, Creating something that inspires me and something that could even potentially inspire others, something that will last, gives me a strong sense of purpose and helps me take steps each day to reach my goals. Some days I have zero motivation, I'm gonna be honest, but creating healthy habits and working towards a dream helps me feel productive, which is like my favorite feeling, <laughs> and gives me this assurance that I'm doing the best job I can to use what God has given me to carve out a legacy a legacy that I can look back on and hopefully be really proud of someday. And each pain and each feeling I experience can help me relate to others going through similar things. And that, that is my silver lining. If I can use my own experiences to help someone else, then I didn't go through them for nothing. I rarely feel confident and I don't have all the answers. I honestly feel like I'm just at the very beginning of my journey and I am no expert when it comes to mental health practices, but 
I just wanted to share a bit with you guys about my own personal struggles through this opportunity and help break the stigma surrounding mood disorders and anyone struggling with their own mental health in some way. Therapy can be a wonderful tool to understand yourself better and help you find healing. So I think it's so helpful to seek out a trusted therapist or a counselor or pastor for some guidance if that's a step you'd like to take. It's okay to have low days, but I don't want you to ever lose hope, you guys. You are not alone, and you are understood to the depth of your core by someone who created you and calls you by name, and you are so, so loved. The Bible says, God collects every tear we cry in a bottle and keeps track of all of our sorrows because we are that precious to him. It also says he weeps with us, but one day, he will wipe every tear from our eyes. I'll be leaving some resources as well as some online destinations and people who help and encourage me in the description box below. So please click on through if you'd like to check that out. I hope you guys enjoy recreating this mermaid look. Maybe it'll be as cathartic for you as it was for me. <laughs> I know you'll be sparkling from the inside out. All the best on your mermaid metamorphosis. Just beware of nets and humans. <laughs> Love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.